In this video, we'll be doing a velocity analysis of a slider crank mechanism, and we'll be using the relative velocity equation to do so. Let's take a look at the geometry of our problem here. Uh, we've got a 50 millimeter crank connected to a 150 millimeter connector and connected to a, a slider block. And uh, the uh, crank, AB, is rotating at a speed counterclockwise here of 60 RPMs, constant speed. And what we want to do is find the velocity of the slider uh, when the crank is at 45 degrees. So let's look at a SOLIDWORKS simulation of this slider crank. And the slider crank is interesting when we're looking at rigid body motion in that uh, the three moving components each represent a different uh, category of rigid body motion. The slider is undergoing pure translation the crank is uh, rotating about a fixed point, and the connector rod is undergoing uh, general plane motion. So it's translating and rotating simultaneously. So before we can do the velocity analysis, we uh, first need to do a position analysis. In particular, we need to know what this angle alpha is, what the orientation of the connector rod is at this um, when the crank is at 45 degrees. Several ways to do it. The simplest is to look at this triangle and use the law of sines. So the sine of 45 degrees over the opposite side of that angle, 150 uh, millimeters, is equal to the sine of alpha over its opposite side of 50 millimeters. And we solve that for alpha as uh, a little over 13 and a half degrees. So now we're ready to start our velocity analysis. The velocity point B is easy enough to find because, uh, again, it's on, a, on the crank, which is undergoing a uh, rotation about a fixed axis. So to write uh, omega as a vector, and it's also a 60 rev uh, per minute RPMs, we need to change that to radians. And uh, since we want our velocity to come out in, in meters per second, we need to, to convert that to radians per second. So that ends up being 2 pi radians per second about the positive z-axis or in the uh, positive k direction as a vector. The position vector of point B relative to A, uh, to get from A to B, we would go in the x direction 0.05 times the cosine of 45 degrees, and in the y direction we would go 0.05 times the sine of 45 degrees. And so the velocity of point B is the cross product of the angular velocity vector and the position vector. And so those are written out here. When we cross K cross I, we get positive J. When we cross K cross J, we get negative I. And the magnitude of uh, both those components are the same because the cosine and sine of 45 are the same. So 2 pi times 0.05 times the cosine of 45 is that 0.222. Um, and again, positive j direction, negative i direction. Units, uh, radian being a dimensionless unit, then we end up with velocity in meters per second. And the sign should make sense there. If you look at the arrow showing the direction of the velocity, we know that it's in the positive, uh, has a component in the positive uh, y direction or j direction, and it has a component in the negative x direction. Now we move on to point C. And to uh, find the velocity of point C, since we know the velocity of point B now, we can use the relative velocity equation. And since B and C are on the same rigid body, we can write that uh, relative velocity, that is the velocity of C relative to V, B is omega cross the position vector of C relative to B. So that relative velocity is the velocity as if point B were fixed and the whole uh, connector were rotating about point B, then the velocity of point C, of course, would be omega cross R. So we add that to the velocity of B, and we have the total velocity of point C. Well, we don't know what omega is. That's one of our unknowns. But we can write it as a vector as omega K. So if it's positive, it would be in the counterclockwise direction, it would be uh, about the positive Z axis. And if it comes out negative, we know it's in the other direction. The position vector of C relative to B would be the length 0.15 meters times the cosine of alpha in the x direction, and then in the negative j direction, uh, the length times the sine of the alpha of the angle alpha. 
So plugging in all of our known values now, again we have the velocity of b which we already determined, we have omega cross r on the second line there, and when we do these cross products, remember again k cross i is j, and k cross j is i, so for the i component though, because of the fact that there's already a negative sign there, the negative signs will cancel, so both of the terms we get from the cross product will be positive, and we add those onto the uh, terms that we have for the velocity of b. So in the i direction, we have, um, again, the velocity of b in the i direction plus 0 0.03536 omega i, and uh, then for, uh, for j, both of those uh, uh, terms are positive. So there is the expression for the velocity of point c. But now we have to recognize that point c is a point not only on the connector, but it's also a point on the slider. And the slider is undergoing pure translation in the x direction or horizontally only. So what that tells us is that the y component of the velocity must be equal to zero. And so from that we can solve for the angular velocity uh, bc. And let me go back to that just a minute. At minus one and a half radians per second is minus 87 degrees per second. And we can check that by looking at our um, uh, simulation again and looking at a plot of the angular velocity of the connector. And this is for one full revolution, but the starting point is at 45 degrees crank angle, and so we can see that our number at degrees per second agrees uh, a little less than uh, minus 90 uh, degrees per second, so that number matches up okay. And so now we can plug in the value for omega in radians per second into the uh, expression for the velocity of c, the x component of that, and it comes out to uh, minus 0.276i, and that's 276 millimeters per second, and unfortunately I drew the arrow in the wrong direction. Uh, the arrow is actually uh, to the left in instead of to the right, and let's take a look at, uh, at that as well. So I'll close this plot, and we'll show the uh, plot. This is a plot of the acceler uh, excuse me, of the velocity of the slider, and we can see the minus, uh, you know, about 275 at the starting position, and um, I also see that the the velocity uh, maximum velocity would be at this point right here. So the block is uh, is moving outward at this. Uh, at this time hits its max velocity then begins to slow down and in fact hits zero at this position here where we're fully extended. As it starts back it will hit the negative, uh, highest negative velocity you know, a little bit more than the 45 degrees where we started. When we get to here we're, we're, we've increased the velocity to its, uh, to its minimum and again we hit zero again at about this location right here where again we're extended as far back as we can go to the left then the velocity of the block will be zero as it begins to start back to the right. And we'll just make one final comment that uh, the method of instantaneous center is probably even easier uh, to do once you know what the velocity of b is uh, you can simply extend um, a perpendicular to the velocity of b, a perpendicular to the velocity of c, and so that point where those uh, dotted lines intersect is the center of rotation at that particular moment in time. So measuring the, uh, the distances of those two uh, dotted lines, since we know the velocity of b, we can say that it's also, that velocity is equal to omega times that distance, and we can uh, solve for omega, then simply multiply omega times the uh, distance of the, uh, of the blue line down to Vc, and get Vc that way.